is good, yo? It's your boy Todd back here with another video. It is getting towards the end of season six in NBA 2K21, my team, which means only one thing that the season of Ward video is upon a season six glitch reality rewards. Now, before we dive into it, if you are new to my channel and have not yet, please consider smashing that subscribe button as we are on the road to 70,000 subscribers. So, our first award today goes to the cheesiest player in NBA 2K20 with my team. Now, cheesiest, that can have a lot of different meanings. First of all, we got a Ben Simmons card who is six foot ten at the point guard position with a 90 some three ball, just absolutely ridiculous. Then let's talk about Taco Fall. Seven foot five, I'm pretty confident. Eight foot two wingspan, literally a cheese ball in Taco Fall. Now he is a glitch card too, so not a lot of people have him. So very, very cheesy card in Taco Fall. Then let's talk about Bull Bull. Seven feet two can play the power forward position and just moves differently. Overall, guys, each and every one of these three cards are so cheesy. And it's just kind of been the, this is, you go back here and look, season six was glitched reality. This is a prime example of it. When it comes down to it, give me Bobo as the cheesiest of them all at seven feet to a power forward. Current gen next shit, it doesn't matter. This dude's speed and the way he moves is just unfair. Moving on to our defensive player of the year. Another award that Ben Simmons Dark Matter is available for. You look at it, 6'10 at the point guard position, guys. Similar to real life, you guys know the effect that that can have on each and every player, you know, in real life and in 2K. Just so, so disruptive. Then we get Bobby Jones. Basically, 97 every defensive stat has all the defensive badges you could possibly want. Only 6'9 at that power forward, small forward position, but still a defender that you don't want to miss out on. Last but not least, we do get the Galaxy Opal Giannis, probably the best power forward center defensive player in the game, in my opinion. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, guys, at least from my perspective, you got a point guard that is 6'10", with all the defensive badges you could possibly ask for, all the defensive stats in the game. And more than anything, his movement and the fact that he's 6'10", won my heart over as the best defensive player that we did receive in Season 6. Moving on to the most overrated card that we did get in Season 6. All of these cards are dark batters, and I would not even consider using any of these cards. Now, if you're on Next Gen and want to run JR and Pete, be my guest. Even Melo, be my guest. On current gen, I would never recommend anybody running any of these cards. None of these cards are even worth considering running. You got J.R. Smith here, who is what? 6'6", six, six, but he does have steady shooters, so that kind of limits him. And his release isn't even on very quick. You got Pistol P, who does have the Ray Allen base, but he's 6'5". Doesn't even move that well on next gen. Yes, you can make him work. And then you got Melo. He's just Melo, man. And so they change his release. He's not going to be anything. So you got each and every one of these cards who on current gen, I would not touch with the 10-foot pole. On next gen, JR, Pistol, and even Melo. They're not the worst, especially Pistol P. But when it comes down to it, I think the most overrated card in NBA 2K21 Season 6 is Dark Matter JR. Now, the reason I have him pegged in here as the most overrated is the fact that you have to grind a lot to get JR Smith. Now, I get it, XP is easy to come by this season. Like, I've not even grinded on my own account. I'm at like 75K, but it's just ultimately not worth it for a very mid Dark Matter JR Smith. Moving on to the most underrated card in season six. Now, here's where things get very interesting. Because you look at each, each of these three guys. You got a Pink Diamond, you got an Amethyst, and then you got a Galaxy Opal. Now, let's just start it off here with the pink diamond Trevor Reza. Now, Trevor Reza, guys, he is underrated, in my opinion, just because a lot of people in the community don't hype him up to be as good as he is. Like, I personally believe Trevor Reza is a top five shooting guard in the game on current gen. Now, I might be biased. You guys might disagree with me, and that's all okay. But I love what Trevor Reza can give me on both ends of the court. Defensively, offensively, has Hall of Fame showtime, has a nice release. Now let's move to Devin Vassell, a card who is not talked about. Like Trevor Reza is talked about a little bit. Vassell is not talked about at all. He is still on my no money spent squad account because of how his release is, quite honestly, is what it comes down to. I agree a lot more with Vassell compared to a lot of other players in the game. And that alone is why he's up there. Only six foot five, but can defend. I'm pretty sure he has Hall of Fame showtime. Does everything at a very high level. Last but not least, we got our triple threat online reward, Ron Harper. A card on next gen who I wouldn't use, but on current gen is absolutely incredible. I get it. You might be like, oh, well, he can't curry escape. He can't do this. Look, Ron Harper is incredible. Say whatever you want about Ron Harper with his Hall of Fame showtime. I don't even mind his release. 
He's been on my No Money Spent Squad account for a very long time. Comes down to it, I'll give the award to Devin Vassell because underrated. That kind of means not talked about or overlooked in the community. And I think Devin Vassell is really that guy. After that, we are going to get to our top token reward that we did receive this season. Now, this is going to be the token reward for their specific tier. So, obviously, Pete Maravich overall is probably the best token reward that we got this season. But to get pissed to Pete, you'd have to lock in every single one of the Galaxy Opals as well as a thousand extra tokens on top of it. So, objectively, to me, is Pistol Pete worth it in any scenario? Absolutely not. Like, there's no scenario in which I'd be like, okay, lock in Pistol Pete Maravich. Let me get to Bob Lanier, a very, very mid and mediocre token reward at that Galaxy Opal tier. You can even debate whether he's the best Galaxy Opal token reward or not. Is he that much better than Moses Malone? I'll leave that discussion up for you guys because Bob Lanier is okay. But again, is he worth the 750 tokens? I personally don't believe so. Then we get to Pink Diamond Charles Oakley. A card who is serviceable at that Pink Diamond tier. So you look at a card for 150 tokens. And in my opinion, Charles Oakley is, you know, a pretty decent value. And so when it comes down to it, guys, I don't really like any of the token rewards we got this season. But I do think Charles Oakley is the most kind of worth it, in my opinion, out of all the other people that we did see compared to Pistol Pete and Bob Lanier. Then we move to our budget MVP. These are cards for less than 10, 15K that I think are very, very good. So we got Trevor Ariza, obviously, Devin Vassell. I've already talked about that. Then we're going to talk about Eddie Curry. At the center position, think about the budget centers we got in the game. I mean, yes, we got some good free ones in like a Jaron Jackson Jr., but think about auctionable centers. We got Eddie Curry. We got JaVale McGee. Who else do we got? Sabonis is like, the good Sabonis is like 40K. Cat's not even close to the level we need. When you compare that to, you know, the shooting guard small forward position, where I think it's so deep, you got guys like Kyle Korver. You just got so many other options. I just think Eddie Curry's value is so, so elite for his specific price. But again, Ariza, in my opinion, is by far and away the best budget shooting guard in the game. So it really was a two-horse race. Devin Vassell, I'm super high on you, but you're not quite to that next level. Came down to it, guys. Giving Eddie Curry the reward, really, it was kind of a blowout just because he is irreplaceable. He really is, especially if you didn't grind for guys like Jaron Jackson Jr. After this, we are going to talk about the Mr. Inconsistent Award. Now, in this award, you do got two guys with the Hall of Fame Steady Shooter. Now, we all know what Steady Shooter does on current gen. Makes you get more full bars, makes you miss a lot more whites, and because of that, that's why Tracy McGrady and AK-47 are on this list. Now, specifically with AK-47, who I use a lot more, there's some games I'm absolutely chicken man with AK. There's other games I'll be wide open and I just won't even want to shoot the ball with Andre Kirilenko. Then T-Mac, right? Here's my thing with Tracy McGrady. If it wasn't for the steady shooter on current gen, it'd be no debate who the best shooting guard in the game is on current gen. But because of that, give me DeRozan over him and he is just so inconsistent. Even when I play against T-Mac, there's guys that'll green a lot with him and then all of a sudden he'll get a full. There's guys that'll go 0 for 6 with him in one game just because they don't have his release timing down and he doesn't hit that many whites. Then we got the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who's always been my Mr. My Mr. Inconsistent in Kevin Durant. Throwback to 2K20, man. Kevin Durant was just so inconsistent always for me. He could be the best card, could be not even a top shooting guard in the game. Similar to this year, same thing. Kevin Durant, some days is by far my best shooting guard in the game. And then some days I don't even want anything to do with Kevin Durant. So very, very inconsistent, this card as well. But for me personally, Andre Kirilenko is my most inconsistent. He still runs on my squad, but man, there are some days I just, I just get so angry at AK-47. Next award is our best Evo award. Now, this win's gonna be pretty short. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it. We only got two Evos the entire season, unless I missed out on one, which I don't think I did. First one, Jimmy Butler, we're gonna talk about. When he gets Evoed up, he's not terrible, but I mean, he's Jimmy Butler, Evoed up to a diamond. You can't really expect too much. Then we get Mel Daniels, an actual, actual usable diamond, or usable, uh, I shouldn't say diamond, a usable dark matter when you do get him Evoed up. And when you do Evo him up, he becomes very, very solid. He gains the steady shooter, so our next gen turns into an absolute beast. And that is why the winner of my best Evo goes to Dark Matter Mel Daniels. Next award is our Auctionable MVP. Now this was a very difficult award to give out because again, I play competitive games quite a bit. And there's some days for me in which Shaquille O'Neal just dominates the game. Like he will just dominate my opponent. Then we look at Ben Simmons. 
defensive player of the season offensively what more do i need to say 610 with the burst in the game has pro 8 his release is very smooth let's not forget about Giannis Antetokounmpo an 85 three ball has a hot spot from that left hash and just another very solid card all three of these cards are top six or seven cards in the game I don't think anybody's going to argue me on that. Now, Shaq's kind of a preference type of player. Ben, I, if you argue he's not the best point guard in the game, fire it at me because he is the best point guard in the game. Then Giannis, in my opinion, still the best power forward in the game. When it comes down to it, for me, though, Ben Simmons is our MVP for the auctionable players. Moving on to the non-auctionable MVP, and this is one that splits the community. J.R. Smith is just there for show, the highest rated overall at a 99. Then we start with our 97, Tony Kukoc. Now, card that just came out i think yesterday yeah we just got him yesterday and he is incredible has that ray allen base on very quick now he's a lefty it kind of throws my release timing off a little bit but the one thing about him is he's 610 and only weighs 192 pounds now a lot of people don't talk about that but i'll talk about it player model is something that matters a lot in 2k and if you're 610 with and only weighing 192 pounds you're gonna you're gonna see that on the court but nonetheless tony is definitely chicken man you shouldn't miss wide opens with the card i'm gonna defend at a high level has the high of fame ankle breaker you're gonna be able to make plays tony is very very solid then we get danny fairy the fake fairy card that i got today is incredible no doubt about it 610 with a 75 wingspan i do believe base 98 on very quick so smooth the base 98 on quick is okay that's what ak has but on very quick it is just next level good can defend obviously make plays it's really preference but i think on current gen specifically it's a blowout in my opinion it's no contest on current gen give me danny ferry as the non-auctionable mvp after this we are going to get in our all ami all diamond pink diamond guy symbol and our all uh dark matter squads now we used to have an all ruby team but we didn't even get enough rubies to make a team now we might have had you know five rubies but it wasn't even worth doing trust me when i say that but we're gonna start with our amethyst clem haskins here a card i used on my no money spent squad account uh and i i definitely liked him has that kobe base he moved pretty solid and honestly he held it down pretty solid for me it's just nowadays we got so many other budget point guards i wouldn't recommend using him but he was solid for our time devin vassell my starting shooting guard on my no money spend squad account nothing no more needs to be said i've already went over him six five butter release can defend at a high level awesome awesome card isaac akuro a card that is very very solid no doubt about it a lot of people probably prefer him to Devin Vassell, it really comes down to preference. I'm just a big Vassell type of guy. But Akuro is definitely, definitely good. And I decided to run him at that small forward position. Went with the double big inside lineup. You could switch. You, I probably should have switched him. Precious at the four, Matt Bonner at the five. Either way, we both know that those guys are incredible. And only, Precious is only six foot eight. That's why I encourage you guys to run him at the four. But look at his stats. Absolutely incredible. And then Bonner is just incredible. Like all the way around. I know I haven't used either of those guys on my No Money Spend Squad account. But if you use them and are having success with them, just go ahead and keep using them. Because both of those guys are absolutely incredible. Moving on to our all diamond team, starting with Justice Winslow here at our point guard position. Not that you could have went with Tyrese Halliburton, you could have went with Kirk Heinrich, which I know a lot of people like those cards, but I just like a little more size. Justice Winslow is a card I tried out on my No Money Spent Squad account. He just didn't really fit what I wanted and what I was looking for. But I've played against a lot of people who are good with Justice Winslow, so I can't really take much away from him. Simmons, a card, Lionel Simmons, in which he is going to be a lot better on next gen. But even with that said, he's very, very good on current gen. I know a lot of people hype him up to be like a top 20, 30 card on next gen. I don't know if I can say that because I haven't played enough next gen, but still very solid on current gen, a card I couldn't leave off the diamond team. Sean Elliott, a card I used on my nobody spend account basically all season long, not anymore, but has that old Zion base. I think it's based 29 on quick or very quick. Sean Elliott was an absolute sharp shooter for me. Very, very solid 6'8". Lamella Ball at the four. Guys, it was painful to get rid of him on my squad, but every you know all things must come all good things must come to an end at some point and that was the case for the metal only six foot seven that hurt him a little bit but offensively here is you're gonna be hard pressed to find a better power forward in the game the dude with the curry escape his release absolutely immaculate on the offense man last but not least uh, with our all diamond team we are gonna go talk about diamond eddie curry in my opinion by far the best budget center in the game the best budget player in the game add him to the all diamond team Next, we're back to talk about the all-pink diamond team. And honestly, 
you can make a case that the all diamond team is almost nearly just as good as the all pink diamond team. Starting off with pink diamond Frank Nilakina. If you look at the point guards we got with the all pink diamond team, unless I miss one, wasn't a lot there. Overall, very, very weak. We had a man, guys like Emmanuel quickly, but just a weak point guard position, pink diamond wise, all the way around in season six. But Frank wasn't bad. If you got him, he's definitely usable. I think he's six foot six. But just think about him as just like a pink, another pink diamond Lonzo ball is the best way I can describe it. And then moving on to the shooting guard position, Trevor Ariza is definitely just a shoe in. By far away the best shooting guard small forward at the pink diamonds here, even compared to Kyle Corver. Now, Kyle Corver barely made my squad. There were some other guys that I thought about throwing in here. So someone like Richard Duma. But uh Kyle Corver just definitely just prevailed by by the slightest of margins, just because of his ability to shoot the ball with a butter release. So it was the Hall of Fame showtime. Bobo at power forward, easiest, easiest, easiest pink diamond guy in here he doesn't even belong at the pink diamonds here quite honestly he belongs at the all dark matter team which he would start on that team i'll get into that later but in my opinion one of the top two power forwards in the game then a center no doubt about it jaron jackson jr a free card that you guys could grind for definitely recommend even if you need a center you can still grind for jaron jackson definitely go and do that at our opal team the opal team is incredible like, you look through and through, guys, and it is absolutely incredible. Starting it off with Lonzo Ball. Moments card that we did get yesterday, absolutely incredible. If you want to run them as your starting point guards, do your thing, especially on current gen. Top four point guard in the game, no doubt about that. I have a lot of success with Lonzo Ball, but I love this pink diamond as well. So you get the pink diamond Lonzo with the Curry Escape and some extra Hall of Famers, and that's where you're looking with the Galaxy Opal Lonzo. KD, no doubt about it easiest easiest addition to this all opal team fake fairy at the three tony at the four that duo if you can get both those guys on like a no money spend type of squad oh, i'm speechless if you can get those two guys they can take you places that's all i'm gonna say about those two both are gonna give you about the same thing but knock down on the offensive end good defensively and can even make plays absolutely incredible and then obviously i know i normally like running Giannis at power forward but with this opal squad you just have to move him one spot up to that center position and we all know what yaya is about the all dark matter team so look briefly do you guys think the all opal team would beat the all dark matter team leave that down in the comments below because i don't know who would win in a game if it was the all dark matter team versus the all opal team but leave that down in the comments below all dark matter team we got ben simmons the best point guard in the game the best player in the game at six foot ten absolutely incredible t-mac at the two again i i wish he didn't have the steady badge but even with steady guys still one of the top cards on on current gen in the game next gen obviously does have that hall of fame blinders jason tatum a card i'm very very high on with his release on current gen specifically Think his player model, I mean, compared to, let's say, like a Danny Ferry at the three hurts a little bit. Uh, and the fact that he can't run shooting guard. If he could run shooting guard, my, my, oh, my. But uh, even at the three, definitely solid. You just got to know what he's going to give you on the court. Blake Griffin at my four, obviously, is incredible. Attacking the rim with the Hall of Fame Showtime. He has that wide player build. Makes him even more impactful on the defensive end with an absolute butter release. And then Big Shaq in my center. My favorite center in the game over guys like Will, over guys like Kareem rounding off the all dark matter team but that is going to wrap it up for my teams for the video i hope you guys did enjoy it if there's anybody i missed out on let me know that down below in the comments because i'm sure i missed out on one or two guys and one of the awards but let me know your thoughts on the awards do you guys agree with them disagree with them let me know that down below in the comments drop a like on the video subscribe if you are new and as always man i love you guys and have a blessed day